Hello, beautiful souls. Well, today's a tigger kind of day. And it's a smudging kind of day. It's a rainy kind of day. It's a gray kind of day. And it's time to lift our spirits. <sighs> because that's what enlightenment is all about, right? To be enlightened is to be uplifted in your spirits. So let's do this. And let's begin, first of all, by placing your hands on your heart. That in, oh, hey, Lorene, that intimate place in yourself <clears throat> where the mind and the body come together. All right. So <clears throat> draw your essence down into your body from wherever it has been so far today and allow yourself to be open and available for all that the universe has for you. Oh, all right. So I'm going to leave this burning because it feels today, today for me was a bit of a tigger, bouncy, kind of jiggy kind of day already. <laughs> so I'm going to leave this smudging us because if I'm feeling it, I'm pretty sure you're feeling it too. And hi, Hector. So <clears throat> let's just, I'm going to take a moment. Oh, Virginia, hello. So I'm going to take a moment and we're going to put up our protection. So just energize your hands for a second. Put your hands over top of your head. Let your, let your fingers touch. And now we're going to bring our hands forcefully down to the side with a big sound. Whoosh! And we're going to shove that energy into the ground six feet. And then we're just going to turn the top of our body, not our feet, but just your torso. So this is really a lovely spinal twist. Okay, same thing above your head and down to the side. Whoosh! And shove that energy. Now bring your hands in front of your face like this. Mm -hmm. Touch your heart. Turn to the other side. Take your arms out. Bring your hands in front of your face like this because you'll be looking that way, not at me. And now bring your hands to your heart. Take a breath. Do I feel safe? Because some days, you know, if you're hanging out with me, chances are you're, um, you're an empath, that you feel things and that sometimes those things that you feel are not yours. That's what empathy is, feeling things that other people feel. And right now, right now we're having some pretty big changes. And if you've been noticing that you've been sleeping a lot more, I'm hearing a lot of that. I myself am also sleeping a lot more. Hey, Rex, <laughs> nice to see you. I haven't seen you like forever. So this change of the season, you might notice that it's a little more dramatic than it was last year, that it's a little more uh, taxing than it was last year. And so we want to come home to ourselves so that when we start to feel tiggerish, jiggy, and we're um, kind of in that, wow, I wonder why that's going. You can put your hands on your heart and you can ask, is this mine? Is this mine? Because oftentimes people like us will feel things for other people. Hi, Donna. Lovely to see you. So we have this ability, right? We feel for others. It's part of being human. But we want to distinguish between my feelings and your feelings. I mean, I love you, but I don't want to take on your feelings. Because that deprives... Oh, look at all that love and caring. Because that deprives you of feeling them. You know, sometimes when someone is feeling sad, we want to make it better. But instead of that, just putting your hand on them and just being in that for just a moment allows them to feel their own feelings. So if you've been feeling jiggery, jiggery if you've been feeling tiggery, then know that it isn't all yours. So let's shake it up.
have a sip of tea. Mm. I'm drinking passion, by the way, <laughs> because it's good to be passionate. It's good to bring that kind of heart energy um, to the world. So I'm talking about power animals today. I'm talking about spirit guides. And I'm talking about how characters like Tigger can be a power animal. You know, Tigger's a wonderful thing. Bouncing. And the Tigger energy, having a, a power animal. You know, we get, we get all caught up in seriousness. And we think that power animals have to be something that is real, right? But they don't. They can be Tigger. They could be a tree. It could be a stone. Your power animal is not limited by your limiting beliefs. I make your power animal can show up as an eagle. It can show up as a chipmunk, a worm. I recall the very first time that I ever journeyed for anyone else to bring them a spirit guide. We were all in class. There were 23 of us, 24 of us. And we were journeying for one another. And I brought back an orange fluorescent inchworm. Yeah, there's no words. <laughs> because my ego, my ego said, oh, this person shouldn't have an inchworm. They should have something else. What's wrong with you? And when I told this woman that what I brought back, she laughed and laughed and laughed. Because it had an association for her. It had nothing to do with me. Can you believe it? So, when we lighten up, we also allow ourselves to open up. I had to really, yeah, really funny. <laughs> I had to really look at how much my ego gets, got, and sometimes is in the road. So, when I do a soul retrieval some for someone my ego steps out of the road now was it e easy to get that happening not in the beginning because you know we all want to look good be good do good excel be successful whatever that means to you and part of that is in the ego so when you know you have spiritual gifts and you begin to use them and you get an orange fluorescent inchworm, it's very humbling. But you know the joy of it was it didn't have anything to do with me and it meant something to her. So this is the bliss of doing your spirit work. Spirit gets to come through you. And as a matter of fact, here's what I believe about the ego. I believe we train our ego. We use our ego. I love to make people laugh. I think it's the best joke in the world just to make people laugh. So I'll make fun of myself because I think I'm pretty funny. that part of my ego, that part that wants to be laughed at, that part that wants to everyone to think I'm fun. And so use your ego. Don't annihilate it. Oh my goodness. When I hear that, that just makes no sense to me. Your ego is useful. It got you right where you are. And if you're not where you want to be, you just get to use it some more. 
help it change, help it grow. Be the best you you know how to be. No, be the best you you can be, not how you know to be. You already know how to be or how you are. sleeping a lot, that you're a little groggy and foggy. Well, it's normal at this time of year. We go through a huge change at the end of summer and into fall. Leaves drop, right? That's how dramatic the change is. So we're part of nature. And so we will feel it as well. So if you're feeling a little foggy, groggy, a little gray and sluggish, it's normal. Allow yourself to have a little recovery time. One of the things that I think that we do as as humans is we get into competition. And rather than competing with ourselves, oh, I'm better than I was yesterday, what we do is we compare ourselves to other people. As if their journey has anything to do with ours. When you are walking on a path, there might be somebody walking beside you over there and over there. why power animals and spirit guides are so important. One of the ways that the sh- one of the shamanic beliefs is that if there is dis-ease in your body, disease, if you're experiencing that, it's because you're dispirited. You've lost your connection to spirit. So if you think back to when you were itty bitty, did you have a teddy bear? Did you have a rubber ducky? Did you have an owl? What was it? Because we all have that. Yes, lay near the fireplace season. Oh, Meg, that's a beautiful way to um, to embrace this, is to find something positive about it, which is honestly what your spirit guides do. They help you see another perspective, and oftentimes, always a higher perspective, because they're, they're in the spirit realm. Looking back to when you were little, well, and even now, you know, I have a representation of the goddess Athena. I have, because she's part of my spirit committee, I have um, a white teddy bear, I have a brown teddy bear, I have a moose, because all of these part of my spirit guides and having them around reminds me because it's easy to go unconscious right now and so when we have these little reminders around what happens is we go oh yeah I'm that I knew nice to see you and we have that connection And we have maybe even gone and done some research about our, about our power animals, Um, learned a little about where they live, how do they live, what do they eat. You know, one of my first guides was a moose. Did you know that moose is one of the only animals that can eat pine needles? That's how they survive in the cold up there. Who knew? So until you become
become familiar with these animals, you might miss these attributes that they bring you. But when you study them, Ted Andrews has a wonderful book. It's called Animal Speak. And in it, he has, um, he talks about the animals. He also talks about their attributes. He talks about their physical qualities. Thanks for all that love. And how it is, what they bring to us. So, if you look back to your childhood, you probably had some power animals. You didn't call them that. Your parents didn't say, hello, I'm giving you a power animal. <laughs> they said, oh, here's a cute little teddy bear or a cuddly something else. And you carried it around. I remember a time when my daughter had a, a power object. It was a, a silky doll. visiting and we were driving away and Silky Doll wasn't with us and we went back because honoring this connection, this deep connection that we have with these symbols reminds us that we're all interconnected. Let's raise the vibe. power animals are intimate with you. That's the first level of intimacy, is this spirit being that you're connected to, you're connected with. And if you notice with some of them, you already have those attributes. You already carry those qualities, which is maybe why you and that animal, you and that spirit guide are connected because you are like one another. You know, the likes attract, like attracts like. Now, we used to get told and taught, I was taught, that uh, that um, that's not true, but it is. So if you admire someone, if you like someone, it's because those qualities are part of you. You know, I love Tigger because Tigger is bouncy and Tigger is up and Tigger is like a spring, boing, 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 always, always bouncing, but bouncing back. That's resilience. That's self-reliance, having that quality. And if you can do it with a smile on your face and not become harsh and bitter, hallelujah. So my guides, my allies have been with me since I had a near-death experience at five. Yours have been with you, unknowingly maybe for you, forever. So, would you like to learn how to connect with them? Well, shamanic journeys are the way. They're not the only way, but they are the first way. I believe that. I went searching for the oldest way that we connected to the divine. I went through religions, Catholicism, Anglicanism, Protestantism, Judaism, Judaism, and I couldn't find what I was seeking. I studied Wicca. That was the oldest form that I knew. Studying astrology, and she was taking us to the planets with.
with that constant rhythmic drum beat. Just like that. And phantasmagoric things began to happen. And we were like, okay, so we went to this planet and this thing happened, but what about all this other stuff? And so she was teaching us astrology, shamanic astrology. And so some of us dove deeper. And I realized that what she was teaching was something that I'd been doing since I was five. I had no clue. I thought y'all could do that. I thought everyone got messages. It didn't occur to me that you didn't. I've always been getting them. This gift is easy to learn. You can use it for yourself. You can use it for others. So if you want to tap in, if you're ready to tap in to your inner visioning, stay tuned because I do a master class, The Art of Inner Visioning. guidance so that you can do what you came to do so you can be on purpose now so many people are really wondering what their purpose is am I on purpose what what am I here to do and your purpose is so mutable like my purpose right at this minute is to stay fully present with you to watch the little loves and the thumbs up and the comments and to, hi Tammy, and to be present. And after that, I will have another purpose. But we have this idea that there's some overarching purpose to our life. Well, when I was a mom, that was my purpose. And then my purpose was to become a dance movement therapist. And then my purpose was to study astrology. And then my purpose was to become a practicing and teaching shaman. So your purpose changes throughout your life. When you were itty bitty, your purpose was to figure out how to get something in your, in your fingers and into your mouth. Your whole purpose. That's it. That was it. So... Um, please relax a little bit about your purpose. And as you open your heart to your passions, you'll find that those are your purpose. You know, 24 years ago, just over 24 years ago, I quit my day job to follow my bliss, to follow my passion, which is to help people move from stuck to unstoppable, that is always with as much grace and ease, laughter and playfulness as possible. With simple spiritual strategies. It's so simple. It is all just so simple. But you know, that left brain likes to make it all complicated. The right brain says, let's just do it. The left brain says, I need to know all the steps first. And so that limits, that limiting belief that I need to know how before I can take a step, that just stops us all dead in our tracks. So we walk around like the living dead. We follow rules that don't, that don't match us. Well, I say break free, <laughs> drink tea. Mm. Now, all teasing aside, well, no, that was serious, actually. I really do believe that we're here to live our passions. That anything else other than following your passion is BS. And, you know, we all live in the BS section for a while until maybe we have a spiritual awakening. And we go, huh, there's more to life than this. And 
I might not know how to do this, but I'm passionate about this. I don't care if it's bowling or crocheting or whatever. The unique, beautiful skill that you have, other people want to learn. So, have to open, accept, and receive. So let's do that. Let's share our love right now. And I hope you're inspired to find your power animal. I hope you're inspired to follow your purpose every day. So do this for 24 hours. Just, you know, if, if you're cooking, are you on purpose? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're showering on purpose, look at how many possible places that you're already on purpose. And then you can start to go, huh, I've got these all covered. I'm on purpose here, 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 and here. And that success builds on success. So when you realize that you're already on purpose, you're already following your heart in these areas, maybe not all of them, then you have, you have success. And you can anchor in that success, knowing that if you can do this, you can do that. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Energize your hands. Take a nice deep breath. Put your hands on your heart. Hmm. And now I open fully to give, accept, and receive all that the universe has for me. Now, let's do it in a tigger kind of way. I open fully. Give it away, give it away, give it away. Accept big bowls out of your hand and receive, put it in your heart, all that the universe has for me. Your heart radiates out 360 degrees all the way around. So one more time. Let's give it away. Open fully to give, accept, and receive all that the universe has for me. So your power animals, they might be Tigger, might be something else, but they're there with you, just on the other side of your knowing. And if you'd like to know how to find them, message me and I will get you in touch. All right, lovelies, have a fabulous rest of you. Oh my God, I forgot it's Friday. So enjoy your Friday if that has meaning to you <laughs> or um, just enjoy every day. So I love you. I'll see you. Bye-bye. And if no one has told you yet today, you are amazing.